To continue with um, practicing money for an assignment, um, you'll see that I have a table here that has a bunch of shop, uh, stuffed animals at the pet shop and then how much it costs for each animal. Be careful because the order is all scrambled up. Just like when we order base 10 pieces, I scrambled up the order of the money because not all money when you take it out of your pocket or you dump it out of your piggy bank automatically goes in the correct order. So just be aware of that. Um, looking at the table, answer the following questions. Um, I want you to pay particular attention to letter E there. I want you to make up your own problem. Don't include the answer when you upload it to the um, discussion board. Rather leave it just blank because I want you to go into another classmate's discussion and answer their question. So solve a classmate's problem for your response. You only have to do this for one classmate, um, but you need to use pictures and, or diagrams and words to answer questions A through D. Scan and upload your work into the pet shop discussion board and then respond to one classmate's made up problem. So their letter E. The more that you show, the better off you are. Remember, I want to see all your work and your thought process so I know you fully understand what's going on. Hand span is the measure of distance from the tip of the thumb to the tip of the little finger with the hand fully extended. A group of second graders measured their hands and reported their data to the teacher. As a class, the teacher recorded the data on a line plot. The data is shown as follows. So you see along the bottom is the hand length in centimeters. And then for each student, we just kind of added another dot so that we could count how many they are. So let's just start. How many are there? How many students were in the class? Well, I can count that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 students in the class. Are there any patterns that are observed? Do you notice anything? Most students have about the same hand span. There is one that is way bigger over on the far right hand side here. I wonder why that might be. And notice that the most students have the hand span length of 16 centimeters because it is the tallest. What are the largest and smallest spans? So it looks like the largest span being the most centimeters is 23. And the smallest hand span over here on the left is 14 centimeters. There were three students that had the smallest hand span. What is the difference between the largest and the smallest? So 23 minus 14 is 9 centimeters. We could use a line graph to, to do that, or we already have it listed here. We can count 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Counting right on that line plot. Use words to describe the shape of the data. To me, it appears taller in the center like a mountain. It also looks like there is just that one peak. And some of us have larger hand spans than others. This is very subjective to what you or your students might see. Homework. Under the Walk the Line homework, print off the United States map that I have provided for you in a Word document. Pick two points on the outside borders of the United States, excluding Hawaii and Alaska, so that the line between them stays within the borders. Draw the line. How far apart are the points? Measure the length of the line to find out using centimeters. Rounding to the nearest whole centimeters. Students at this point do not know decimals and they certainly do not know fractions. 
do this 10 times and make a line plot of your data, just like the line plot of our hand spans. Starting anywhere on the map of the United States and drawing in a straight line until hitting a border, what is the longest line you can draw? What observations can you make about the line plot that you created? When complete, scan and upload your map and work into the appropriate Dropbox. Moving into geometry. This is a very small but impactful set of standards. But we need to reason more with shapes and their attributes expanding more into polygons. So we're going to need two and three dimensional shapes, attribute blocks, pattern blocks, hand grams, geo boards, shapes, paper, objects to create. A polygon is made up of line segments that meet end to end. These line segments are called sides. No longer will we call them lines as in previous grades. Each side meets at exactly two other sides and three sides never meet at the same point. A polygon always has as many vertices, no longer will these be points or corners, as in previous grades, as they do sides. A polygon always divides the plane into exactly two regions. One region is inside the polygon and one is outside the polygon. So that must mean that it is, it is a closed shape. Triangles are polygons with three sides. Quadrilaterals are polygons with four sides. Pentagons are polygons with five sides, and hexagons are polygons with six sides. We're not talking regular quadrilaterals, regular pentagons, or regular hexagons. We are just identifying the sides and how many sides there are, so identifying the polygon based on the sides. I assume that you print out the lesson PowerPoints, so take a moment, pause the video, and complete what I have listed here. Color the insides of all the triangles blue. Color the inside of all quadrilaterals red. Color the inside of all pentagons orange. And color the inside of all the hexagons green. Circle all the shapes that have sides that are equal. Take a moment, pause the video, and then we'll reveal um, the answer. Okay, let's find the answer out. So it should look something like this, okay? You may have needed to take a ruler and measure sides to see if they all are equal or used um, a side of a piece of paper and marked where they were to verify. And notice on the very bottom there, there is nothing that's colored with that kind of box um, because notice that it's not closed. So all of the sides don't meet one another and since it's not closed, it's not considered a polygon. Again, I hope you printed off this so that you can do the activity as we go along here. So using the rectangle here with the hashtags, draw a grid on the rectangle by connecting each mark to the one directly across from it on the opposite edge. It should look like this. The grid separates the rectangle into many little squares. How many squares are there? Well, I can count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen little squares. There are five little squares in each row. Count by fives to find how many squares there are in the entire rectangle. So 5, 10, 15 of them. So this is another way that we can count how many there are. Is there another way we can count to determine how many squares there are? Well, instead of going by rows, perhaps we can go by columns. So we can count by 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Special note that at this age, students aren't required to know how to count by threes, but it's a good opportunity to show that that pattern does exist. One num sentence, one number sentence, which shows the total number of squares is three plus three plus three plus three, so 15. 
take a moment, pause the video, and write another number sentence that shows the total number of squares. I also came up with 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. Or 1 plus itself 15 times for 15. This is a great introduction um, and to multiplication, even though they don't recognize that this is multiplication, um, they will recognize once we get to multiplication that it is repeated addition. Uh, using the same cut pattern for each figure, partition each shape into fourths. Partition each shape into fourths. So using your pencil or a pen and you have your printout in front of you, um, give it a whirl and we'll see what we can do. Pause the video and come back. All right, this is how I did it at first. I do a straight line um, down the middle of each side, so on the top and across the side, and cut them into fourths. Notice that each large item is cut into four equal parts. We will call then each part a fourth. Using the same shapes, and a different cut pattern for each figure, partition each shape into fourths as well. So pause the video, see if you can do it a different way. And maybe your first way was a different way than mine. So the second way I did it was to cross, go across them, so in an X pattern on each one. Even though the resulting shapes after being cut are different, each shape is cut into four equal parts or fourths. Geometry homework. Draw and name one shape for each of the following characteristics. Scan and upload your responses into the Draw Me Dropbox. Draw a, an, a shape and label the shape for something that has three angles, four angles, five angles, and six angles. Something that has two equal sides and five equal sides. So you should have six different drawings and six different shape names for those. Part two, using 12 squares of any size, how many different rectangles can you make? Draw all the possibilities and you must use all 12 squares. You may use virtual manipulatives to draw. And I give you a link of a good one in the, the Dropbox area. How does adding four more squares to the 12 we already have change how many rectangles you can make? Draw all those possibilities as well. So you'll have three things that are part of this one homework assignment and then scan and upload them to the Draw Me Dropbox. Next week we start grade three.